Welcome back to Positive Life. What I've noticed over time uh, since uh, I wanted my dream is that my life is always messy. When I say messy, there's like no balance. It's not stable, it's not consistent. A lot of times I'm like finding myself uh, cleaning up things or I'm carrying a lot of stuff in my bags, carrying backpacks, like stuff with a bunch of books and with, you know, a preparation stuff to, um, to, to live the filmmaking life, uh, to be the screenwriter. And sometimes I feel like that I need to always carry these things with me all the time, even if I'm not using them. Where my bag is full of um, like highlighters, pens, notebooks, uh, screenwriting books, filmmaking books, um, lighting, stabilizer. Like I always have these things like I need to uh, be ready, like I'm gonna just need it. And sometimes I do need it. Like um, I'm using a gimbal right now like that I, I like to carry around because it makes um, recording easier because it's more stable. So you don't have to like hold your phone and there's, there's more um, like a lot of movement, like Blair Witch type of uh, shooting style. So I don't know what it is and why I do it and why I carry a bag and it has like my iPad, keyboard, books and all that. Cause sometimes, you know, I just want to have the stuff available when I need it, which is okay if you have one bag though, but there's times I'll be carrying multiple bags with like tripods and all this stuff. It's almost like I'm ready to, to shoot like a reporter. To shoot like the moment that I see something like like I need to be spontaneous. And that's why I might carry those things, but it, I don't know what it is like when you are pursuing a dream or say chasing a dream. Cause I feel like when you're chasing that you're more um, um, desperate to get it. And I'm pursuing it because I'm not desperate because I've been waiting a long time, but I also don't feel I have worked hard enough to, to achieve the dream. There's times I've worked hard, but not hard enough. I don't feel I've ever worked hard enough, gave all the effort, poured my heart into it, even though I want it and I, and I believe that I'm good enough to do it. And, and I've gone to film school. I've uh, written a lot of content that I've gotten paid for over time. Um, I've worked for, um, for my production um, recently, a couple of years ago. But there's a lot of times that you're just thinking about the decisions that you made in your past um, that are, that coincide with your dream. And like, why is it a dream? Cause, cause we need it so other people could see us or we need to uh, prove to our parents like I told you I was gonna get it or friends or we wanna show that we're capable of doing something that we're um, successful and that we didn't struggle all those years or have all those challenges for nothing because we wanted something. So, so the part of it is that we don't have stability because maybe we don't wanna take certain jobs. I mean, we'll work jobs that, that um, you know, to make a living but we're talking about like stable, like jobs that are careers. Like when I interviewed for IBM, it seemed like for that whole hour, I had to prove to, to hiring manager that, that I didn't want my dream. Cause it was almost like he was questioning that you seem like you want to be a, like, like it's crying out inside that you need to be a screenwriter, that you're destined to be a screenwriter and you sure you don't want that anymore. It's almost like I had to prove to him that I didn't want my dream anymore and that that I wanted to work that job. But the problem is when when you have to talk about yourself, when they say, tell me about yourself, if you tell the wrong story, the story about your journey and it's connected to something else like your dream, then maybe they don't want to stand in your way to get to your dream. But then you really want to to do that job that you're good enough but you have to think about it that when they say tell me about yourself 
what they want to know is like, who are you? Like what, you know, because if they're going to be working with you, they want to know that there that is someone that's passionate about the job that you're going to be doing, that you're, um, that you bring a lot to the table. You have, you know, a lot of skills, but you're also an interesting person. It's just that the story I told was about, you know, where, where I was, you know, how my dad met my mom and that we came, you know, to, my dad was in the military and we ended up eventually moving to California. My dad got stationed there on the, his last duty assignment. And, and then I talked about like the, the screenwriting and the writing that I wanted to Hollywood and I went in the military and I got a military and I moved down. So that was the wrong story to tell if I wanted to be a content writer for IBM. So what I was doing was building value into a dream and showing that, yeah, I haven't succeeded at it, but now I'm more um, resilient than I was before. I could say I'm more like relentless, but not in a, in a way of like stepping on people. Or I'm doing way more than I have been doing and I understand what I need to do. And that's where the frustration comes in is that when I had to um, move some stuff in storage and then I had to transfer to somewhere else because this storage um, company decided that they wanted to raise the cost of my storage that I just got recently um, by over 100%. And then they had to justify and say because of the market, it was almost like the, the integrity of it, of them raising the cost. But that's, that's um, part of the reason is that, that you put yourself in those positions because you're trying to live this dream and then things happen. Like my parents, you know, had to move and, and you know, and there, there's a small space and then you, you have to, um, you know, find um, storage for some of your items because there's not enough space. But then it's, it's the stuff you carry around. So that the connection is that I mentioned storage. I'm using storage as an example is that if we have storage, then we're carrying around a lot of stuff that we don't need. We have like documents, papers, like just all this stuff. I have books and there's just like a ton of stuff and you start to look at it and say like why am I always carrying all this stuff with me it's not that my storage unit is a mess but it could be better and just like my car like I just cleaned it out just now and I had a bunch of items in it and I had to organize it is this like why do I put myself in a position of not being organized and being clean when I say clean is like, yeah, I have like dog hairs in my car and all that and I could vacuum that all out. But why we have like a bunch of like change or like wrappers or bottles, it's almost like that you put yourself in that position of making your life harder. So when you're going after the dream, chasing the dream or pursuing the dream, whatever it may be to you, that your life gets messy because yeah, you're focused on this dream, but you're not focused enough. You like, you don't have that laser focus. It's almost like this sporadic focus of like, oh, I want this when you want to talk to people or if you want to do highlights uh, on your uh, social media, if you want to talk to somebody because you're so excited, like, oh, I want that dream and like, oh, you want it too. And you try to have this discussion. So it's like a lot of talking going on, a lot of talking. And I, and I'm part of it that I could tell people like, I, I can know how to do the dream. I could tell stories. I know how to write scripts. I know how to structure it. I, I could do everything. I could write a book if I wanted to, but I'm not committing myself to doing it and I'm finding it to be a problem and it's frustrating. It's so frustrating where I can't just sit down and do it to do something I love because I allowed my life to get messy because I wanted this dream and I did other jobs along the way then they weren't consistent and I didn't make enough to to have a more balanced life. So the key is balance. It's like knowing that your where your priorities are. 
and maybe the, the dream is not a priority it's making a living to survive and also to, to maintain your health to to know how am I going to spend my day each day so say if you're not at a job that requires you to work 8, 10, 12 hours a day or, or more then you need to know what you're doing each day because you can't allow your days to to disappear and if you're not getting productivity you're not completing projects you're not doing the things that you need to do to advance then every single day is going to be wasted what i mean wasted is that Another year is going to evaporate and then you're going to say, what did I accomplish last year? And then each year you're going to wait and say, okay, I'm going to do better next year. So now it's like a new year and you're like, I'm going to do better this year than I did last year or the year before, the year before, the year before. You could be reflecting back to a moment when you were outside exercising and say, okay, it's New Year's Eve and, and tomorrow I'm just going to make all these changes. I'm going to do all these things and I'm really going to accomplish my dream. I'm going to get my finances up. I'm going to like do, pay off some bills. I'm going to do all these things. And then, then you don't do it because now every day is wasted. And wh where's it? Where's most of your time going to be? Like, where's the most of your time going to be directed? And then you find out like you get this notification from your phone and it's telling you like, where you spend your time when you're on your phone and then somehow it's social media and i got off of social media probably in, i think it was in 2020 stopped posting but it doesn't mean that i have not i'm not on social media i just stopped posting like on my page for pages but i but i still make these videos on youtube so i don't know if i consider youtube social media and maybe I watch videos, but sometimes I watch videos that are for learning, for uh, for for certain things that I see that okay, I need to. Um, there's a video on this, or how do you do this for writing, or like like a company. Um, I forgot the name of it. Um, I can't remember right now. I'll talk about it later. But it's this one company that um, has to have a, a like a filmmaking flow uh, software. And they do videos on YouTube, but then they, like if you have a production, you could use their software to to organize your production. And if you're writing a script, then you could organize everything and you could use their software. I, I use Final Draft, so I'm not gonna really try to test another software. I, I use Celtics like on my iPad, but if you want to um, work on projects, like say online, so say if you go to Celtics.com, like C E L T X dot com, then they're gonna have like some free uh, free version. It's very basic, maybe one project. You don't get a lot of like features, but if you want to do for script writing and you want to have X amount of projects per month, then they're gonna charge you a month of a fee, like fifteen bucks a month, twenty bucks, and then they have these other plans. I mean, I don't I don't feel like that. You should pay for that because you could just go out and buy Final Draft and then this updated each time there's another new software because they keep making it all the time it's almost like final draft is like iphone because it's final draft 12 and i got i think i bought i used to use final draft 6 and then i use 7 and then i use 8 and then i didn't buy any uh updates until 11 so i have 11 but now it's 12 so it's kind of hard to keep up. You know that if you just had six or seven, they don't have updates for it no more. So if you have like six, seven, eight, that Final Draft is not going to give you any updates for it. They're going to stop providing support for it. So that's why you have to buy the new version. But if you had a six on your computer and you didn't like reset. So say if you had to reset your computer and then reinstall it, then it won't install because you need a certain... Um, code like an action code and they won't provide you that code so that's the problem it's like when you try to load final draft 8 um to a computer and that then you don't have it so i have like final draft 8 on my powerbook 12 um 12 inch uh, powerbook you know the apple one of uh, the g4 
and I have another computer. I have a MacBook Air, which is my main computer, but the PowerBook is kind of like um, a side computer and it's kind of hard to find a battery for it because they don't make them. They used to make them, you could buy them and then they stopped making them and now they want like a fortune for the batteries, like where they're like $150, $200. It's like almost ridiculous prices. And I need a battery because I have a battery that only works for about 40 minutes. So I can't always be by a plug. So I can't be mobile with that computer. So I just have to have it plugged in. But that's why I use my iPad and I just use Celtics and then whatever um, content I write, I could just email it as a PDF and I could copy and paste it and, and put it in the file of my final draft. So it's like, I don't have to carry around a big computer. So, so see, you see how I get sidetracked because I'm talking about all this other stuff and I'm going all over the place because my focus has to be on what is the intent of this video? The intent of this video is to say, is to tell you that your life gets messy. Your life gets messy when you're trying to accomplish a dream. And so as it works out for other people and they don't even know that they want this dream that they just find it accidentally they might be in college and they're majoring in something else and then right before they're gonna graduate they're like oh i'm gonna take this like elective filmmaking class and then all of a sudden they love it and they're just like this is i think i, I want to do this after they had already committed to want to be an engineer or doing something else they're like i think i want to be a filmmaker and then they do it and it seems that they have certain, it's not about luck or uh, aura or that success finds them. What it, what it is is that they have certain qualities that make it possible for them to make it. Like focus or commitment or discipline, that they're more consistent. So there's other things they bring to the table. So that's why they seem to find that success. And people that have the passion and they, they've been doing the film, filmmaking for a long time or writing, that they have these skills and they're good at it and they have talent and they can work hard, but it's not consistent. That they just don't do what they need to do. So that if they have a script, they're not sitting there working on it. It's almost like it's, it, it is very sporadic and it's, it's, like you could be all over the place. Like you're writing one day and then you're not writing and then you're you're doing audios and you're thinking about your script and you're doing, you're, you're thinking about, like you already know the whole story, but you need to write it. And you can write certain scenes, you know it. And it's like you have an emotional connection with the story and you could, you could write it. And if you committed yourself, you could write this script in a week, two weeks. We don't need to spend two years, five years, I mean, like, how can we tell people that, oh, I've been working on this project for five years. That That's not something that you want to share. I've been going after this dream for like 20 years. Like, and they're going to want to know that, did you achieve something with it? Did you finish the script, scripts, or have you optioned anything? Or did you win a contest? Or if you're going after this dream, like, like why are you going to go after your dream if you're not going to make it? and then allow your life to fall apart and to make a mess of your life. So then, then you just get frustrated and then you start to look at like, I don't know if I would want to live this life again if I was given another opportunity. It's almost like you, you love life, but then you don't love your life. It's like you, you have gratitude, you appreciate things that people did for you. you you, you love God, you love animals, you love nature and all that. You, you, you have integrity, you have compassion and that you treat people good. And when you um, are in a role, you work hard, you wanna do a good job, you're a good team player. You could have all this stuff. You could have education, you could have skills, you could do the job, you could live your dream, but you're going up against other people and a lot of times they're looking on paper and they're also paying attention to certain things you're saying. If you get the interview, they're looking at certain things, certain things that would you be a good fit? It's not that you can't do the job. It's not that you can't uh, work for a, a great company and have and make a career out of it and do a good job. It's that 
Are you going to have passion? Are you going to enjoy doing it? Because they want you to enjoy doing the job. Even if it is dry, even if it's you're not as busy, or if you're overwhelmed, they want to know if you are a good fit for the job. This is like relationships. Sometimes you see somebody and you're thinking like, how can I get in a relationship with someone else? Because look how they're just a mess. And they do all these things and they can't like stay focused all over the place and they complain and they whine and they just have all these like really bad qualities and they're negative they don't believe in themselves they don't believe anything and if you help them they won't even say that if you supported them they'll say like oh i have to keep fighting for myself i know i have to keep fighting for myself so they don't even see that you're there for them it's almost like they don't even notice you but they're telling you after like oh you support me and then later on they're like i'm fighting for myself so you could have a person like that that doesn't that fears being alone. They could, they they don't want to leave something that's bad for them, or maybe they make it appear that the person that they're with is is bad and that they're good. We don't know like what goes on behind closed doors. We can't trust everything that people tell us. So you could have a person like that, and you could think like. Who is going to be in a relationship with them? Who's going to deal with the whining, complaining, and everything? And then, and then one day they find someone that is like that worships them, that will do anything for them, and will spend all their time to do things for them. Meanwhile, they may have a dream, and they're not getting any closer to their dream. It's almost like they think that they're going to accomplish their dream, and then they're not getting closer because their their credits if you look on mdb just because people write stories about you and they all seem similar it doesn't mean that that you're living this dream that you want you could act like you are living the dream but you are not because if you go to imdb Look at the credits of projects. So say somebody's an actor, somebody's a writer, somebody's a director, producer. They could go around talking big talk. They go around telling people, oh, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a director, I'm a screenwriter, or I'm a producer. And then you look on their credits and they don't even have a page up. They might have like, maybe they worked on one thing or something and somebody part of the production put their name because they're part of it and then they're linked up they don't even got a photo of themselves they don't have anything that will show that they are successful in their dream if that is their dream then they're not doing a good job at it because they don't even have like a bio they don't have trivia they don't have the roles to to show that okay there are someone in the industry they're doing something they're making it happen and that's why people that don't have a dream and then somehow find themselves in hollywood are successful because they have certain qualities about them that make it possible for them to live their dream that they have the discipline they have the drive they have the passion they're motivated like this everything is falls in a, into place and that's what you need if you want to be successful in like like directing or screenwriting or producer like you have to be out there doing it like it matters to you that you believe in yourself and that you're working hard and i could tell you from experience that i haven't worked hard enough there's times that i would sit down and i would write short films or I write feature films or I write scenes or like I know how to do it but it's kind of hard when you're not making a living and there's other factors whether you don't have support you're not surviving you're not you're, you're barely scraping by and it seems that your life is like that ever since you wanted your dream that your life is inconsistent it's uh, it becomes a mess and and then sometimes you walk around like thinking, you know, like, why do I, why do I keep doing this? And then you know that you have a purpose is that you have to, you know, share stories and create stories and to show people I understand your life. But is it worth it? Is it worth it to 
continue down a road that is going to make you frustrated. It's going to make you think about whether your your life is worth it, whether the life that you have lived amounts to anything. And then you have to remember, you have to remember that the little things that you've done, I mean, the way that you treat animals, pets, people, the wisdom that you share with random people that you might be waiting somewhere and you have conversations with people and you share things that could help them. You share knowledge, wisdom. Those are like the little things that you do or you help people on a bigger scale to to believe in themselves, to guide them, to be their light when they're in the dark. And then those are the things that have value and they, they are like a purpose. It's not like that is your purpose. It's like it shows like that it's part of your purpose. It's part of the steps. Like your purpose could be something like bigger. You might say like, I need to go accomplish those dreams. I want to make a difference in this world and all that. But that could be, you could be lying to yourself. It could be that you need to accomplish your dream because you want to be famous. You want people to be talking about you and you want to feel value and self-worth. And you want to, you want people, you want the lights flashing on you. You want to be on the red carpet. You want people to write about you in magazines or talk about you on the news and all that it could be those things that that will make life more frustrating if you're going after a dream for that reason but if you want to be a writer and you have the skill you don't even also you don't always need the talent but you could have talent but you have to work hard you have to meet deadlines you have to meet deadlines because it doesn't matter how good you are. If you don't meet deadlines, it, it's about money. Because if they need something and you don't deliver on time and you can't commit yourself to doing it or you're not honest about the status or the progress of a project, then, then you're not going to be useful for anyone. So the bigger picture is that if you want to live your dream, then you need to know why you're not living it. You need to know what is blocking you. You need to know what you need to live that dream and what you need to do. You could buy all these books. You could follow other filmmakers. That, those are their stories. It's not that you could say, I'm gonna go follow James Cameron's you know, journey or I'm gonna go follow Steven Spielberg's journey and all that. They, they lived in a different time, a different generation and different things worked for them. Now you're in a time with technology where you could shoot things on phones and 4k you can edit things things are more available now you don't have to be cutting film and doing things like they did in the past but sometimes going back to the past of doing things old school style could actually work because then it shows you like what they had to do in the past like whether you had to do, work on a typewriter or you had to do you know um, before you can send files across the you know, like uh, the internet, like on the like email, you can just email um, a script on PDF or as a final draft file before you had to actually send it in. And maybe you couldn't send it because it, it, it's like if you have to print a script and it could be 100 and you know 20 pages, 110 pages. I mean, can you afford to send it to like 30, 40 companies? I mean, that's like a lot of pages. That's like 4,000 pages of ink maybe you couldn't afford to do that so then you have to be sure where you're gonna send it now it's more efficient for for people and you could send files and you don't have to like send something overnight or um two-day express it like you have options and that the world is more favorable for for writers and for directors and you got youtube and you didn't have ways to share movies to show people like trailers or to show people like there's this is something that I filmed or this is my script there's more options now than before so the, the filmmakers of the past maybe I mean even though it was um, a challenging for them to to get to break into the industry because there's a lot of factors a lot of factors and it's always about because if you it's always about skill because 
if you develop a system and you're confident in it and it works for you and you follow that system that is for you not what somebody else is doing or maybe you might want to study other filmmakers other writers and what their process is but you have to develop your own writing voice your own style your your system like how do you do it when you want to write at night or in the morning or you want to make it like a nine to five like however you want to do it but you have to show that you care about your dream so hollywood is your dream then you have to show that you care about your dream otherwise many years is going to go by and you're still going to be trying to live it and your life is going to be a mess maybe you have a full-time job or you have a business and all that and you're doing good but then there are other people that still stick with it and their life is a mess it's it's like a it's their, it's like their story do you want to be living the stories that you create like if you're creating a bunch of drama or a lot of conflict or thrillers and all that, i mean do you want to be living the life of the stories that you create and ask yourself that do you want to be those characters that are just run all over there's like do you want to be the pursuit of happiness like yeah there's gonna be an ending and it's gonna be success and it was worth it but you want to be like the pursuit of happiness and at the end there is no happiness you didn't get the job you didn't get the dream you didn't get the girl you didn't get you didn't have kids you didn't get the home like at the end of your life you're just laying there ready to leave this life and that you're not even happy and you wouldn't even want to return back to this life again if you had an opportunity because you didn't even want to be yourself anymore i mean do you want to feel that way yeah you have this one life it's not that you're not going to have another life but you have this one life as yourself as you and you can say your name you can look in the mirror and say that I'm this person and I'm a human being I'm in this life and that I have this dream but the dream doesn't define me I have this dream and whatever your dream may be it, it could be like sometimes we get stuck saying like oh Hollywood is my dream you know um, making music is my dream or being on Broadway or being a NFL player NBA player Major League Baseball player like playing hockey whatever you're dreaming you want to be the president of the united states you want to be a politician like you have all these dreams but is that role going to be your dream so if you assume that role and you struggled all your life to get to that role are you going to say this is my dream like i have finally accomplished my dream like sometimes it doesn't work that way so if you're going to be writing a bunch of scripts you struggled all your life you struggle to get this dream you've been like writing non-stop and you made everything about writing you just talked to everybody about writing you just did everything about writing and then maybe you option one script for like three hundred thousand dollars is that going to be your dream because by the time you reach that if you ever do are you going to be able to make a living with all this inflation are you going to be able to be, like so wouldn't the dream be that i want to be a working screenwriter that is able to make a living uh, a good living as a screenwriter and that I could go and maybe buy a home off the off the coast of California up north and walk my dog go hiking go to the beach and just have this like life where I could create and a space where I could create and I could see the ocean I could see the sunset I could drink coffee I could just sometimes I could just relax and then there's other times I could work hard I mean wouldn't that be the dream is it the dream is like, oh, now everyone knows I'm a screenwriter because I sold this one script for $300,000 and then minus taxes and whatever's paid to the agent or manager that you have like little money. Are you gonna be able to survive on that money the rest of your life? Because you have to really think about what is your dream? Is it worth it to get your life into um, a mess where you're in a constant mess all the time and where you're just running around like you are in a story? You're running around with no structure your car's a mess, your home's a mess, your finances are a mess, like you don't you don't have savings and you're you're getting older. Do you want to live that type of life? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And that's why you need a purpose. If that is your dream, what is the purpose of me doing it? What is the purpose of my life? What is my calling? And can I do it with passion whether I get paid for it or not? 
Am I going to stay interested? Am I going to be able to do it without writer's block? Am I ever going to be able to to make a living doing this and be a professional doing it? And am I going to look at it as like, I love this dream because no matter what I get into doing this dream that at the end of the day, I'm glad I am a writer. And you have to think that way if you want to live your dream. And if you have to get into these messes, then you have to figure out a way to be more organized. And if you enjoy being messy, you enjoy uh, being unorganized and it's part of your process, and you don't care if your car is messy, you don't care if your office is messy, you don't care if everything is falling apart because you know that you could turn it on at any time. If you like want to do that, like I could turn it on and make fix this mess or I could stay organized along the way so I don't have to do all this this um, cleaning or organize. And it's like your script. Are you going to be like, if, the reason why we organize a script is because we need to tell the story so the director could have the script and they could get everything they need and hire all the people to, to make this movie. And maybe it doesn't always follow the script, but you have a script at least is saying, okay, this is a story and we're going to build, make this story. We're going to make this movie and we need this script because when I used to write commercials, the, the owner of this film company said, I need the script. I need the script. Even if it's 30 second script, it's a 30 second commercial. He needs a script because without that script, he can't make that commercial. And he would shoot it directly based on the script that I would write. And even if it takes me 90 minutes, two hours to write that 30 seconds, that without that script, then he has nothing. So I wrote four commercials for this company and three got made that were screening in theaters in the Bay Area at like AMC or different theaters. And they were commercials for their company and they were effective and they're really quick. It could be 30 seconds and I would tell a story. Even if it's in 30 seconds, I could tell a story about this company and I can organize it in that way and make people want to go there. So that takes skill, but if you practice and practice and practice and you focus and you say, I want to do this, I want to be a screenwriter. I want to be a working screenwriter. I want to work for a studio. I want to be, uh, a screenwriter of like where I option things. I want to work on television for a show. Then you have to show that you want it. Cause if you're like wanting to be like a football player for the NFL and then you're just sitting around like, uh, and you have like, you know, you go to the gym and you do all that and you, you just show off and say like, yeah, I can run fast and, and I'm good and all that. But if you're not out there practicing all the time, it doesn't matter how talented you are. If you're not out there practicing all the time, making it saying like, this is my life. This is, it's not who you are. This is what I want to do. It's not about who you are, like that being a football player or writer or musician defines who you are. It's that it's what you want to do. You love it and you're going to do it. No matter what anyone says, you're not going to doubt yourself. You're not going to overthink it. And that's why it's important to know that when you're feeling down and you're feeling like your life is a mess, then you're not going to do everything you can to achieve it because you're going to be stuck in your head thinking about the past, all the mistakes that you made, the way people treat you, how people take advantage of you, about things not working out for you, that the world's against you. Then you're going to start thinking about all this negative stuff and then you're going to be holding yourself back. It's going to be a lot of, like a bunch of junk in your storage. It's going to be like your car being a mess that you could be more organized. Your storage could be more organized. Your room could be more organized. Your, your house could be more clean, but it's not. It's a it's mess because then I would think it would be like you could be lazy and uninspired to go live a dream that you could easily do. Sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves. Like, are we doing enough? Are we making excuses because it's easier to make excuses? Are we complaining and whining because we wanted it to, to be easy? We wanted it to be handed to us? Or are we doing everything that we could possibly do? And we have like armor on us so we could absorb anything that's thrown at us that no matter the criticism, no matter what people say, think about us, it doesn't even matter if they don't even respect you, that you know that you don't need anyone but yourself. And if you want God in it, which is a good idea, then he will help you. But you, you need to believe in yourself. You need to be doing the work. And if you want your life to be better, and you want a better life, you want that dream life, and you don't want to be in a 
in a big old mess daily, then it starts with you. That you need to start things and you need to continue doing it and you need to be consistent, you need to be disciplined, you need to have good time management and you need to know that it's not easy. Is it worth it to you? Is it worth it for your life to be a mess and for you to continue going after this dream with no guarantee that you're gonna accomplish it down the road? You might be driving around the road thinking it's gonna get you somewhere and you might travel forever and then when you get to the end of the road, it's just a dead end and it goes nowhere and you wasted all that time. But can you look at it as that you're going down that road and you gain a lot of experiences down the road, but even if you go to that dead end that you will know that if you go back, you'll know how to handle the things that happen along the way because you already had that experience. And now with that wisdom or that new experience, now you are qualified to do something because now you could do it because you've been down that road. If you change the way you think and you rewire, rewire your brain and say, I could do this and I'm gonna commit myself to it and I'm going to stay organized and then I'm gonna invest time into doing this dream or invest time into making my life better. Don't you think that you'll get closer to your dream and that you'll have a more organized, balanced life? Until the next time, value yourself, respect yourself, love yourself. Peace out.